that's really where we're at at this point. It's not about hard work. It's not about actually being super talented or being able to perform super well. What's up YouTube, it's Tiny C and I'm back with another YouTube video. <laughs> Today I wanted to talk about the ever-changing landscape of the music industry and honestly just celebrity dumb, especially with the recent controversy that's going on around Jojo Siwa. I wouldn't even call it controversy, but just like all the lore surrounding her currently. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. oh my god, she's raspy today. <laughs> I'm sorry, let's be so for real right now. Let's be for real. <laughs> that was straining. is doing all the work it's doing the heavy lifting it's 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 doing a miracle oh, wow nailed it dream guest on my podcast <laughs> and i completely understand that a lot of artists really depend on auto-tune it's how they survive in this world but it should be like an aid like to help not change the entire sound. I mean, I guess everyone's doing it to some extent, but like, this is this is crazy. Questions, but no answers. I think the requirements of becoming a artist, becoming a singer is changing. It's always constantly changing, but I think now more than ever, you don't have to be traditionally talented um, as you used to in the past. So. Jojo Siwa and Ice Spice are very good examples of the fact that you don't have to be talented in the traditional sense, not saying that they aren't talented, but they are not in the traditional sense that you would have expected an artist to be in the past. And so let's talk about it. We have to address the past. Like what was the music industry like back then? Why are they so upset about the fact that someone like Jojo Siwa or Ice Spice is able to rise to fame in today's landscape of the music industry? Well, I think largely in the past, when we think about music, a lot of people had to grind their way to the top. No one was just offered a free ticket in there. So I think the first one that comes to mind is Michael Jackson, obviously like, great musician and he is just a musician that a lot of people will, will reference and give their respect to because of just how he paved the way for a lot of black musicians, but just the genre and the art itself. He was very well-rounded. He was able to sing, he was able to dance, he was able to give you a performance and he had a very clear and distinct personal brand. While back then it probably wasn't called his personal brand, but now we can see it as that. He very much had a distinct flavor and you knew it was a Michael Jackson song. You knew what he was going to give you. It wasn't something that they just had one viral song through social media and they were able to become famous. This was something they had to work at constantly. They had to have talent. They had to have a good product in order to be picked up by one of these music agencies and in order to make a name for themselves. Even if we fast forward a little bit to people like Usher or Chris Brown, people that I think look up to Michael Jackson and try to follow in his footsteps, these are people that also weren't just famous in one day. These were people who had hits and hits and hits and slowly but surely made a name for themselves. It wasn't just because they worked super hard, it was because they actually had the talent, they're able to sing, they're able to dance, they're able to give you a performance, and when you hear their names, you can expect such things. They have a reputation and they usually live up to that expectation. Largely the story that we're gathering is that for quite a long time, artists had to work very hard at their craft. They had to actually, you know, have a lot of talent when it came to their abilities and singing, rapping, whatever it was, dancing, performing, in order to rise to a certain level of fame and stardom. You can be sure that if you were in the spotlight, it was probably because you were really good at what you did. Now, if we look at the more recent times where we see that there's a lot of celebrities that go viral on TikTok, they're able to enter into the industry in different ways than we traditionally would have expected to. I think a good example of this is Lil Nas X. He was, I guess, a meme star, just somebody that um, 
utilize social media in order to rise to fame. And you develop your voice online and, and more than that, you learn how to weaponize it. You've used it in a way that is so powerful. To me, it feels like it's the biggest weapon in your tool outside of your creative. I guess I didn't realize like how great I had become at doing like internet stuff and so people started telling me so i was like is not is everybody not using right. the internet this <laughs> right, way right but yeah you you learn so much like subconsciously just doing the things that you do on the internet a lot of people um see me as just like give me this give me attention give me give me this i want all yeah but it's more of like i created this i'm going to work hard to get it out there in every corner of the world and i'm going to be myself while doing that you <laughs> know and he continues to use these sort of tactics of social media and marketing in order to um, make a name for himself. Would I say that um, Lil Nas X is someone that doesn't have talent? Absolutely not. But I do think he's definitely an anomaly when it comes to rap. And what you traditionally would have thought as a rapper in the 90s or the 80s, it's definitely not Lil Nas X, right? The thing about the rap community is that people are very gatekeepy and they don't really like when there's newcomers that are doing it different but Lil Nas X found his way in and he utilizes social media and he understands how it works and that's how he's able to be relevant and kind of get in there in this different new way that we're seeing. People also accuse him of being talentless and that he relies too much on social media and I think there's also that element of the way that he presents himself. People just aren't comfortable with who Lil Nas X is and how he's disrupting the genre of rap. And because of this, people decide to come for his talent, come for who he is as an artist, and they're just not happy with him. And so in the present day, it really is about how well can you market yourself? How well can you utilize social media? How well are you able to garner an audience and keep yourself relevant in the ever-changing landscape where people's attention span is literally like two seconds, goldfish memory. That's really where we're at at this point. It's not about hard work. It's not about actually being super talented or being able to perform super well. Although I think people still can become celebrities through the traditional route, I don't think that's the requirements anymore. I don't think that's a necessity. I think there's many other ways that you can become an artist. But with that being said, let's analyze Ice Spice first, and then we'll go into Jojo Siwa. So Ice Spice, let's give a little background in case you guys don't know who Ice Spice is. So Ice Spice or Isis Nyjah Gaston, she was born January 1st, 2000, January 1st, 2000. I feel like I should be saying like 2001, 2002, 2003, but anyway, it's just 2000, January 1st, 2000. She's known as Ice Spice. She's a rapper from the Bronx and she began rapping in 2021. In 2022, she released a single, Munch, that has a drill Jersey sound and this went viral. This went absolutely crazy. People absolutely loved it. It was addicting. It was on everyone's mouths. If you remember this time, like everyone was talking about it. Everyone was talking about it. They couldn't get Ice Spice's name out of their mouths. She had songs with Nicki Minaj. She was seen with Drake. Like all of this definitely helped keep the hype around Ice Spice going. Why is there so much controversy? Why do people claim she's talentless or that she doesn't deserve her positioning? You thought I was feeling you? That uh, much. I'm gonna get tons of hate for this because Ice Spice fans have the same energy as Taylor Swift fans in that they believe she can do no wrong. But Ice Spice is a terrible performer. Every time I see her perform her own songs, it sounds as if she's doing karaoke to a better rapper's song. She's a bad performer because a lot of her fans will leave comments on her videos that are like, aw, she's getting better like TikTok and getting so famous on TikTok so quickly has put her into a position as an artist that she really is not prepared for and no one is stopping to teach her very fundamental things like what to do with her hands on stage another dance move other than the bending over butt shaking thing that she does like no one is really invested in the longevity of her career and she's this close to becoming a joke absolutely no hate to ice spice at all it's just that when you look at other female artists that have come out within the last like five six years whether it be mike the stallion or doja cat or newcomers like lola brooke there's a certain level of performance that shows that they've been preparing for this moment and it's very obvious that ice spice has been thrust into this moment and nobody is trying to like make the most of it 
Anyway, electrolytes, like and follow for more. They say that she relies on her looks too much and the fact that she can utilize pretty privilege. She has the ideal body in society that a lot of people like, that a lot of people celebrate. Somebody that has these looks is going to be accepted by the public. They say that she's kind of mid in her performance and she's not really able to perform. She doesn't have presence. And to be fair, like she was a overnight sensation. She didn't have this traditional route to becoming a rapper. She wasn't like a Nicki Minaj who was probably performing for a long time before she really made her debut and was really able to even be on a stage. Like Ice Spice was performing at festivals a year into her her celebrity dumb. And so it's just so different from that traditional path that of course there's going to be some flaws in her performance skills. And of course she's not going to be um, able to deliver her lyrics as good as somebody that's really been working at this craft. Someone that was a bit more prepared, I guess, to be thrown into fame. Um, and yes, she was trying to become famous, but I think that she didn't expect it to come as quickly as it did, or no one really expects to become viral, it just kind of happens. If you look at it in another way, she just leverages all of her assets. She knows she has a nice body. She knows she's pretty. She knows what the people like about her. And I think she makes very catchy music. And so when you put that all together, she has a genius team that continues to just highlight these features about her, which continues to make her go viral, continues to give the people what they want. She has really great branding. I think her hair, the way she decided to go out with the curly orange fro. And so she just understands how to create a personal brand and how to leverage social media. In a previous video I made about how social media is changing, I talked about how social media is this new resume item that everyone has to pay attention to. And I think if you don't know how to leverage social media, you will fall behind. And so when you are a star, that rose to fame because of social media, you're already light years ahead because this is like probably the number one most important thing nowadays in order to become and stay relevant. And so although people like to hate on her, they like to say she's talentless, even if she's not the traditional rapper that we would have expected to see, although she might not be on par or at the same level as a Nicki Minaj, I think because of social media and how it just propels people into becoming viral, they sort of had to play catch up afterwards and then start learning stage presence, then start learning breath control. It's backwards nowadays. It's not put in the hard work, learn all the skills and then get famous. Now it's like, just make art and you might go viral. And then after that, fix whatever is necessary from there and just keep the momentum going. And so I think her team has done very well of capitalizing off of all the controversy. That's Ice Spice. Now let's get into Jojo Siwa. Now, how is she able to bypass the traditional route? If you don't know who Jojo Siwa is, when she was younger, she was on Abby Lee's Ultimate Dance Competition. That's where I first saw her. She also was on Dance Moms for two seasons while also having a YouTube channel. She was just everywhere, to be honest. And then she ended up signing with Nickelodeon. She had a movie, she had some songs, she went on tour. All throughout this time, she was always known for having this bright, over the top, like personality. She was trademarking the bow, the side pony, the blonde hair, and she was just leaning into it. It's like that same theme of just knowing your strengths. Jojo Siwa knows what it is that people like and don't like about her, and she doesn't really care. She just leans into whatever it is that she wants to, and she's created a super strong personal brand especially since she was on YouTube since she was a kid. She also really understands social media. I guess just growing up in the age of social media. She knows how to leverage it to her advantage and she does that very well. Like it or not, what's been in your head the last three days? I was a bad girl, I did some bad things. With Jojo Siwa, a lot of the controversy, especially in her calling herself a singer, is that with this new debut that she has with the song Karma, besides the fact that people eventually found out she didn't write it, she said that she wrote the song. There's a lot of controversy around her and what she does and how she speaks. She kind of like reminds me of Kanye, like she's always putting her foot in her mouth and she doesn't really relay her thoughts that well. But then also like whatever she says, people have something to say. So it doesn't matter what she does. It doesn't matter what she does. But essentially people don't like that she can't even really sing. 
But the thing is that she admits that she doesn't know how to sing that well and she has a ruptured vocal cord and so it's just like she knows she can't sing. So what she does instead is compensates with her ability to perform and dance because she has a background in dance, like that's what she does. And so she's able to put on these like grand performances and it compensates for the fact that she's not the best singer. And so people might call her talentless or that she's not a good singer and ridicule her for that. And it's like, wow, this is who's able to become famous now. Like the fact that she knows how to perform extremely well. She also knows how to leverage her controversies. She knows how to leverage the, the negativity that's going on around her. Again, with Jojo Siwa, we're seeing that although she wasn't like a traditional singer, she's not someone that you traditionally would have thought like could become a singer. Like obviously if someone can't sing, why would they be a singer? It makes no sense. But in this day and age where all you really need is to leverage social media and be a genius with your marketing, you could be a singer. And especially with the aid of auto-tune, you can work wonders. There is a space for what Jojo Siwa is giving. Although I think a lot of the lore around Jojo Siwa is hate and controversy and negativity and making fun of her, she does have a fan base. She has a strong fan base. And so people do love her, whether people want to believe it or not, she does have fans. And I think the people that hate on her just help propel her career because I have been seeing karma on my timeline nonstop. To be fair, I engage with a lot of the Jojo Siwa content because it's so funny. Um, and so now I'm just like seeing all the stuff, but people hate on her and don't like her personality and don't like how she phrases stuff and all this sort of thing. But in the end of the day, like it's just helping her become more relevant and become more popular and chart and all these sorts of things. I think something really important to address is like, why do people hate this change so much? Why do we see so many videos like hating Jojo Siwa, making fun of her talent, making fun of Ice Spice? Like, well, I think it's because people hate change. People don't like to see change and that's just what's happening in the music industry. I think we as a society have an insatiable need for newness. Our attention spans are shortening and this just is a breeding ground for people to become famous. There's a new artist every month that's discovered through a viral TikTok sound. This is the huge change that we're seeing in the music industry, but honestly, just largely in the world of becoming a celebrity. It's not this like rigid path where it's like do A, B, C, and D, and then you can become famous. It's just like put stuff out there and someone might see it and you might become a viral sensation and then boom, now you have a career. This change is hard for a lot of people because some people might like that rigid way. Some people like gatekeeping. They just like feeling like, you know, their taste is superior because this person's vetted through years of experience or whatever it is. And that's just not how it is anymore. Like that's not a requirement. And I think it's not something necessarily to be mad at. Anyone that's becoming famous, it's because they feel the need, whether if that was a laugh whether if that was just, they gave us a good feeling for the moment, be haters for a minute, <laughs> like with Jojo Siwa, it's allowing people to just get all their hate and negativity and clowning on people energy out. As long as someone is able to leverage social media and marketing in this day and age, you know, there's a space for you. It's really the key to all the success. It's like, once you have that viral moment, it's like, how will you be able to leverage social media in order to keep it going? Not everyone succeeds doing this because like I said, there's plenty of people that go viral on TikTok. It's not a guaranteed ticket, right? And so when I see people that do somehow outlast that viral moment, it's usually because they were able to create a strong personal brand surrounding that moment. Things can't be the same forever. And I think another piece to touch on is that some people are just like, music snobs and they think that they have superior music taste compared to everybody else and like them criticizing like oh Ice Spice isn't that good at rapping or Jojo Siwa isn't that good at singing. They think that hating on them makes them seem more superior in their music taste. There's space for every single voice. You don't have to like everything. Like, every sound is valid. 
there is no superior music in my opinion. Like it's all art and you just might not like it. You just might not like it, period. The game is changing. I think that you don't have to be talented in the traditional sense anymore. Not to say that any of these people aren't talented. I still think that they're talented in their own right. And just because it's not what we're used to, it's not them being talented in the traditional sense of everything. It doesn't mean that they are lacking talent. It just means that they aren't what we're used to. And it's gonna only continue to shift in this way. And I think that that's innovation. I think that's creativity and, you know, might be an unpopular opinion, but it is what it is. Like I'm someone that embraces change. And I don't think it's negative per se. I really don't. Cause there's still gonna be those traditional people that are amazing at rapping and amazing at singing. Um, and they're still gonna be there. So there's really no need to fret. It's giving space for newness and that's always welcome that's all i have for you guys don't forget to like comment and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next youtube video